So, you're still with me? If so, I'm impressed. You must be gluttons for punishment. And so am I, because I'm about to read to you another chapter of Metroid High. Today we're going to be covering Chapter 5, so let's get started. Hi, people. Thank you, everyone, for all the reviews and not the flames. Grrr! Well, if you write shit, you gotta expect some shit in return. It goes without saying. Also, thanks to Cervantes, who this chapter is dedicated to. Well, if I learn that someone dedicated a horrible fanfiction chapter to me, I might probably flip a gasket and kill myself. Unfortunately, this Cervantes clearly wouldn't react the same because, as we're going to learn, remember that offer she made at the end of the last chapter to uh, name a filler character after anyone who asks? Well, this Cervantes picked her up on that offer, so we're going to have a character named after some bizarre fan of 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006. I mean, get... Wrap, wrap your head around that. She has fans. Fans dedicated enough to ask her to name a character after them. That is fucking scary. Moving on. This C will be long, so RR, which means read and review, apparently, thanks to all the 140,000 people who told me in the comments. Just kidding, it's not all that much. It was more like two or three. Also, I learned some tricks for form a poetry conference. I went to in Shoal, so I spiced things up with words. Holy crap! Words! In a fan fiction? Are you serious? This is totally going to make things better! But seriously, she learned some tricks from a poetry conference. Uh, and she wasn't interested in learning spelling or grammar or anything like that in shoal. I mean, let's be honest here. Doing what she's going to do here is like trying to decorate a house before building it. You don't do that! Uh, anyway, let's get started with the story itself before I flip a gasket and kill myself! Chapter 5, The Dark Surprise. She couldn't even spell it the same way she did in the, in the drop-down menu, which is, by the way, the spelling that I'm using for, um, the, for the, the PNG you're looking at right now. Time. Once again, it, uh, the, the last chapter ended with the word time. So, yeah, poetry. Three weeks had passed since... Sinbs, the Cholera Sunspiracy. God, her spelling is getting worse with the chapters, not better. And for Samus, it was just the beginning. Dark lights had confused her soul, and it was a burden she could not comprehend. She sat in her bed, grasping sit, the straws that had come loose, straws that poisoned the water of life. Lightness, darkness, ooh, poetry. Samus could not understand the failings that gripped her apart over the three weeks. Forces were turning her away. Away from what? Ridley? I don't think that's the issue there. But it was a force that could not be explained with the words. Grip was squeezing her like a lemon, the real kind. It was like a dream. Only this time, it was for real. Fake. Reality. Ooh, poetry. It sat acting like a chainsaw, and she could not go back to Ridley. Not now. Not like the past. She knew she still was loved, but there was something that was impossible to ever go back. Temporary. Longevity. Ooh, poetry. All of a sudden, Samus screamed. She was losing control over her conscious and there was a new force rising. It was like Samus, only it was Dark Samus instead. Okay, okay, time out! Time out! 
even assuming that everything up to this point made sense in some warped way, you know, Samus and Ridley going to high school together and all that crap, this, no, this I simply cannot ac accept. She's bringing Dark Samus into it. Does she even know who Dark Samus is to begin with? Okay, let's recap. And I know I'm probably going to spend a few more minutes on this than I probably should, but if I'm going to dissect a horrible fanfiction, then by God, I'm going to dissect it all the way through. So, let's recap. Fifty years before the events of Metroid Prime, that was when uh, the first Leviathan crashed on Talon 4. Now, uh, fans disagree on whether uh, the Metroid that was going to evolve into Metroid Prime came from Phase or from Talon 4, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point is that at this point in history, it's very likely that... Um, well, of course it ha of course it happened in the 50 years leading up to Metroid Prime. So, let's see. We got the Leviathan on Talon 4 and at that point it's fairly likely that uh, Metroid became the Leviathan's guardian and he already evolved into Metroid Prime. So, as we know, Dark Samus is the form that Metroid Prime adopted after dying its first death at the end of Metroid Prime and absorbing Samus's Phazon suit in order to stay alive. Which, of course, has to happen, to happen after this shitty fanfiction, because otherwise it would imply that Metroid Prime somehow hitched a ride all the way to wherever Metroid High is uh, on the Leviathan? Who knows? And somehow assumed the form of Dark Samus, even though Metroid Prime didn't have the means to do so yet, and plant implanted her into her subconscious? How does that work? And the other possibility is that, well, by the time Metroid Prime 3 happens... Um, Dark Samus has pretty much become a, a godlike entity, you know, enslaving the entire space pirate race, including Ridley, defeating four of the mightiest bounty hunters in the known universe in a single attack, and she also gained the ability to merge with the Federation's organic supercomputers. So, the only other possibility that I could see is that for some inane reason, Dark Samus, as of Metroid Prime 3, decided to take a little trip through time and go wreak some havoc in Metroid High. Why? Because she can! And you know what? This is scary! But if I'm going to make sense of this, then this is probably the best theory that I can come up with. If, any, if anyone can come up with something better, then feel free, but for me, it's just time travel shenanigans <laughs> in Metroid High. I, I know it wasn't intended that way, but it's the only way I can try to somehow make sense of this situation without going batshit insane, even though I've already gone batshit insane two chapters ago. Well, some of you have already done so four chapters ago. So, um, and that's a perfectly normal reaction, by the way. But anyway, enough making sense of that really nonsensical thing. Let's just move on. She could barely fight to take over her actions. And she was becoming weird. Of course, misspelled I should mention, though, that weird is probably one of the most commonly misspelled words in the English language, so I'm going to give her a little bit of reprieve for that one. It was impossible to know what would happen next, until it happened. This was her cholera, but soon she knew it could not contain. Confession. Possession. Obsession. Ooh, poetry. One-on-on-on-on-on-on-on-on-on-on. 
really knew that there was a crisis, and he was meeting at his house. There was also Ted, Robbie, Tio Juan, and Smiley, the new kid. The tension was emergency, and it was about to implode. What am I going to do? Detonated Ridley. And I think this is something else from a few chapters ago, but... Are you imploding or exploding? <laughs> wow, she's she's repeating the same crazy mistakes over and over. What are the odds of that? Pretty high, actually. <laughs> I'm not so sure that's a great assuage. Ted confusingly used vocabulary that not everyone knew. And you know what the most amazing thing about it is? This is the proper word with the proper spelling used in the proper context. For once, 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 did something right. Break out the party equipment because we're going to celebrate that all night long. Okay, not really. Nothing special. Okay, everyone, we need not to panic and we need to think of a salute toin, Tio Juan dictated. Everyone was quiet and they all thought about the problem. It was quiet conundrum. Once again, big word used in the right context. Impressive, she might actually start to learn. I know, I'm amazed too. And there was not a salute point. Sorry, forget about, forget I said anything about learning. Hat everyone could think of. Samus was not forgiving, and especially she was acting strange, like she was becoming dark. Ridley did not like to think about this, and he didn't. Little did he know that this was much more to think than he, though. Huh? What did she mean to say there? I'm not sure where that sentence was supposed to go. <sighs> if I was you, I'd apologize to the girl and say I'm sorry. Smile, smiley, permitted cool? What? People agreed with this, but Ridley was not so cleverly amused. But when would I do, Ridley contended. Tomorrow, everyone consent-cused? And it was agreed, but little did the meeting know that there was a new darkness on the horizon. Once again, horizon, not horizon. Horizon, that's, that, that's the new spelling. You're going to see it in official English dictionaries pretty soon. Darkness. Ooh. Art. Poetry. Okay, I'm going to stop because this is getting old. One, 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 one. It was a day at Metroid High School, and things were bright and sunny. Because, you know, nothing spells... A tense and tough situation, like things were bright and sunny! <laughs> oh, God. It was like the day that Ridley asked out Samus, but it was not that day ago. Huh? Ridley was ready to apologize, but something was strange. There was a crude, and Ridley wanted to see what the commotion was. It turned out that there was a new kid, and he wore a black cloak with some chains, and he had had blue hair that was natural that he didn't dye. When he walked, he was hot, angsty, and he had a, he had a bad ass! He had a bad ass! <laughs> he had a bad ass! <laughs> Sorry about that, it's just, he had a bad ass. Uh, when someone asked him what his, what his name was, he said, he had a bad ass, I'm sorry. He had a bad ass. That's not how you use the term bad ass, you whore. <laughs> when someone asked him what his name was, he said it was Cervantes. So, if I were this Cervantes guy, I'd be pretty pissed at 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 because of the way I'm being depicted as an angsty goth guy who he probably wasn't, but who knows? 
Being a fan of 111 Samus really Forever 2006 means that you're all twisted on the inside and you probably don't mind being depicted with that kind of crappy imagery. Especially when you have a badass! 